Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. And today I am wrapping up a step in a build that I thought I would share a little technique on using Dubro threaded rods and large threaded couplers. Let's get started. All right, so as you can see, I've got my table set up with a couple of things that I just wanna, wanna point out. Now, a lot of times people try to make Z-bends in the end of these push rods, and that's all fine and, and dandy, but sometimes you want something that's a little bit more secure. And for me, I prefer to do that with safety lock quick links. And the 256 ones were great. The 256 refers to the threads on the end of a rod, and that corresponds also to these large threaded couplers. Now the push rods come in these 12 inch lengths, but they also come in longer lengths too, some nice 30 inch length and uh, comes in a nice solid pack too, so that you can't really lose them and, and they'll uh, stay nice and straight for you too when they're stashed away. For my application that I'm working on a model for, I actually just need a, a shorter section of threaded rod and essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the distance that I need uh, of the rod and I'm going to cut the rod in order for it to slip into the coupler. Now what's worth noting about the coupler is that it accepts one centimeter. I know we're using metric, but it accepts one centimeter of push rod. So it's important for you to account for that one centimeter as you do the measuring. All right, so in my particular application, I only need a rod length of 6.5 centimeters. I'm using 6.5 centimeters as a measurement because I still want to account for that length. So I'm going to use a fine tip marker that I have and I'm going to line this up here. And the end of this threaded rod, I'm going to put at 6.5. And because I still need to account for that one centimeter, I'll line it up with my ruler and then mark my final cut line. From here, it's a simple matter of cutting my rod to length. And you can use this for various other things, but that's for another episode. Moving forward, we're actually going to mechanically solder these two pieces together. And in order to facilitate that, uh, we're going to rough up the, the surface first, and I just use some sandpaper that's laying around the shop. doesn't have to be fresh. It uh, can be any grit that you want. Really what you're trying to do is just create a mechanical bonding surface area as much as you can. Prior to soldering, I like to clean my parts with isopropyl alcohol, and I just put that on a paper towel, clean it, and let it dry. There's not a whole lot of cleaning you can do on the inside of this brass joint. So in order to facilitate getting the solder in there, we're gonna use a little bit of the extra flux that I have. In order to get it in there, I'm just gonna do a small dip into the flux and stick it together. And that's it. All right, so using my helping hands, I've clamp the, the threaded coupler in and the reason we want that we want to act this to act like a cup so it's going to catch all of the solder as it melts into that cup and we're going to try to do it as carefully as possible uh, just so that we don't burn ourselves and in order to help you with that I'll give you a couple of soldering tips along the way so what I like to do for this particular step is use the piece of cutoff uh, rod that I have and I'm actually gonna try to bend the solder around the rod a little bit, and then I'm gonna cut it. These little tiny electrical snips, if you can, sometimes, uh, sometimes scissors will work if you've got an old pair so that you're not dulling them out too much. Now, if you try to wrap the solder all the way around, that's actually gonna be too much solder for what's gonna go around. So I try to trim to the point where it'll wrap around and stay put, but not that it's like halfway. All right, so that my little tiny piece of solder here is staying on the rod and it's, you know, a little bit more than halfway wrapped around. And that's really the only amount of solder that we need. All right, so as you can see here, I've got my little bit of solder in place, just resting. And as we apply heat, uh, the heat will naturally heat up the surrounding areas, including 
the, uh, the rod that's inside and the solder, and it should all fuse together pretty instantaneously. You can try to do this with like a regular soldering iron or a, you know, a, a hot air kind of thing for electronics, but I have found the best tool is a small butane torch. If you use a big one, it's gonna apply pretty much too much heat all at once. So this is definitely a better tool for the job. And like everything else in this hobby, it just takes practice sometimes. With my pen torch lit, I'm just gonna heat the brass threaded coupler. There's gonna be some air escapement sometimes. And then there goes the solder, air bubbles. Air bubbles are gone and we're done. So I'm gonna let that cool. A nice pro tip for cleaning up any of the black marring from any of the flux is a little bit of ketchup. The acid in the ketchup will help clean up your soldering joint to a nice clean shiny finish. All right, so from here, uh, really, we, all, it's very simple. You screw on the safety lock quick links and you can use the brass portion to hold it in place with some pliers while you simply twist on the quick links. I'm going to be using quick links on each end of this rod and once everything is screwed in together I prefer to have my threads engaged as much as possible so I've measured to have my threads engaged all the way up to the very end. There may be a couple of screwing in and out to center the control surface that I'm using this on. That's my approach just for a little bit of extra security of mind. Uh, you can use more or less it's up to you and your experience but i have had good luck with this and other modelers seem to agree with that as well so to finish this demonstration out i just wanted to show you guys what the fully assembled part looks like i've got my control surface centered and you can see the rod that we have made here with a quick link connector with a safety lock on each end and it's on the servo arm as well as the control horn that we've installed previously well, that'll do it for today, guys. I appreciate you following along. Hope you found something helpful and that something you can pass along to a friend. Make sure that you check out dubro.com for all of your hobby hardware needs.